butter mold originally belonged to Nettie York Penland, who was born in 1897 in the mountains of North Carolina. She lived on a homestead in the mountains surrounding Black Mountain, North Carolina in the Swannanoa Valley after she got married. And that homestead that she last lived in is still standing today. She also happens to be my great grandmother. I recently inherited this butter mold. And based on the leaf, palm leaf style pattern on the bottom, it looks like it was probably from between 1900 and 1949, which would overlap with her butter churning and molding years. So to bring this butter mold back to functioning order, I'm going to just simply add a little bit of oil on it. I have olive oil on hand, but you can use mineral oil, coconut oil, anything of that ilk, just to add a little bit of moisture back into the wood and protect the wood, especially before we add butter to it. I've already wiped off the any dust that may have been on here as it had been sitting over the years. Um, so now I'm just going to simply add a little bit of olive oil to my fingers, or you can do it on a cloth and work it into the wood. As you can see, this one is pretty dry, so I'm probably gonna have to add more than one coat on some of the sections that are extra dry. going to wipe off some of the excess oil on here with a paper towel and then just allow it to soak into the wood before I use it. So I allowed the butter mold to sit for a few days to allow the oil to absorb in and now you can see that the grains come out nicely, there's no shiny spots, the oil has absorbed in nicely. And now it's ready for making butter. Well, even though the pretty pattern didn't come through in the clarified butter, I look forward to trying it with regular butter in the future. Uh, to see if I can get some more of that pretty pattern to show up on the top of the butter. So as you saw the last time that I tried to get the butter to release out of the mold, it didn't come out very well. And it lost the beautiful palm leaf pattern that's on the inside there. So I did a little bit more research and asked some of my older members of the family what they saw their grandmother doing. And they said that they put it in an ice bath to get it really, really cold and help it release the butter when it's time. So we're gonna try that this time. It should be about 30 minutes in the ice bath before we put the butter in. All right, it's been about a half hour, so we're going to take out our mold here. And then we're going to fill it with butter that we've been softening. Unfortunately, our kitchen is on the cold side, so it's not softened quite as much as it would say in the summer, but we don't have heating or air conditioning in this room, so it's a little bit firmer. All right, I'm gonna pop that in the refrigerator and come back and check on it in a few minutes to see if it has solidified enough to get it out of the mold. All right, it's been about an hour. We'll see if it comes out. Looks like we may have had a few air pockets. Let's see. <laughs> we 
We got a little bit more of the pattern this time. I think next time we'll need a slightly softer butter to get it all the way into the pattern. But we're getting closer. All right, so we tried it last night and we couldn't get it on there and we thought maybe the butter was too solid. So we melted it in the microwave for about 15 seconds and we put it in there. We're gonna try it again and see if releasing it when it's softer will keep the pattern. Alright, so it's on there a little bit better than in the past, but it's still not forming the pattern on there, so we'll have to keep experimenting with it. Alright, so we tried refrigerating it for just a little bit to make sure it's not too soft this time, and hopefully the pattern will stick. <laughs> stuck to the flame. Alright, so we finally got the outer part of the butter mold off, and now we're going to try and see if the pattern stuck this time. Womp womp. We'll have to keep experimenting and see if we can figure out how my great grandmother did this. Our attempts at the butter mold revealed one of the reasons why we are so passionate about preserving traditional skills and restoring the lost knowledge of daily life. History books and textbooks document dates, names, and events, but are sorely lacking in the how department. How did they get that bit of butter on their toast pre-battle? How did they mend that hole in their sock while exploring the wilderness? Preserving history can look like restoring historic sites, building museums and archives, but we also need keepers. Ordinary folk who devote their lives to acquiring, maintaining, and keeping skills and passing on the how-to knowledge of our ancestors. Heirloom vegetables cannot be passed along as a museum artifact. They must be grown year after year to preserve that tasty piece of history. A delicious paradox that in order to preserve heritage, you have to eat it. You can become a link in the preservation chain by seeking out and purchasing heirloom fruits and vegetables, meat from heritage breeds, or handcrafted items. Next time you watch someone cook a meal from scratch without a recipe, or knit a hat, or plant an heirloom seed, ponder the ways you're watching heritage in action. Don't let tactile history disappear with their hands. Learn the skill yourself, introduce them to your keeper friends, or purchase something they create or grow.